Okay, great. Okay, thanks for the introduction and uh, giving me this opportunity to introduce our research stories on the definition of a uh, compact geometric uh, design space for efficient and uh, robust aerodynamic shape design optimization. So aerodynamic shape optimization is uh, efficient way like convert the true and error design cycles to an mm, totally automatic uh, process. So this is done by defining a design proposition problem. So the objective fun function of these problems can be selected uh, based on the performance you care about, like the drag to minimize or the leg to drag ratio to maximize. And uh, typically, you would need uh, a primary research method that defines the design variables of the uh, problem, which controls the aerodynamic shape of the uh, of, of the geometry you want to optimize. And uh, to ensure that um, your design is practical, you need to specify necessary constraints, like the lift constraints or the thickness of volume constraints. So typically there are two approaches uh, in the literature that can be used to uh, perform aerodynamic shape design optimization. The first one is adjoint based method and uh, it takes uh, advantage of the efficient, uh, efficient computation of the aerodynamic derivatives using the adjoint method and uh, also the efficient uh, searching capability of agent gradient-based optimization algorithm. Since the objective functions and the constraints in this method is evaluated using heavy daily safety model, this method is also called safety-based optimization. And the, the other kind of uh, optimization optimi method is uh, called surrogate-based optimi optimization. Where the uh, object functions and constraints is evaluated uh, by the circuit, not directed by the CFP. The circuit is uh, trained by using CFP data. And since uh, it's very, very cheap to evaluate the RM performance using circuit, we have um, a freedom in selection of the optimization algorithm. And we can perform a global optimization in this framework. So the most popular uh, kind of surrogate-based surrogate optimization is uh, the efficient global optimization. And the both method has been used in different kind of cases, uh, for example, in airflow design, in wind shape design, in different kinds of uh, aerodynamic configuration design. Mm, however, the, both of them suffer some issues from the definition of the geometry design space. The, for adjoint based optimization, uh, also it's e efficient in high dimensional design optimization. Uh, that's the truth, but the, its performance is uh, kind of uh, sensitive to the failures in the evaluations of the, of the functions. And the geometric ab abnormality is the issue that would result in mesh deformation failures and also safety non-convergence. So a few of these kind of issues will lead to a failure of the optimization, which means the time, the cost you spend previously on this optimization will be totally wasted. And this issue also influence the performance of circuit based optimization, but uh, there's a bigger issue in surrogate-based optimization, that is the cost of dimensionality. So there's a study compares the scalability of a grid-based optimization algorithm and grid-free optimization algorithms with the increase of dimensionality, uh, which shows us a trend that uh, grid-based algorithms can skew well linearly with the increase of the dimensionality, uh, but grid-free uh, exhibit worse basically the it skills at least quadratically. There's no direct study on the scalability of a circuit based optimization, but it is uh, well believed that uh, it should be somewhere between grid based 
optimization and green free. So which means uh, this kind of method cannot skew well with increase of the dimensionality. So for example, for a 100 dimensional design problem, the total cost to make this surrogate base of converge would be much higher than, for example, 10,000 evaluations of the CFD. So this is a very, very expensive. So basically these two kind of geometric issues have um, a bad influence on the application, on the uh, application of uh, aerodynamic ship optimization in industrial problems. So they just pushed us to thinking that uh, if we can find out a way to first eliminate the geometric abnormality, and uh, if lucky enough, could we find a way to reduce the dimensionality of the design space and uh, without losing the effectiveness of optimization. Okay. So first to eliminate the geometric abnormality, we need a model to uh, evaluate the validity of the aerodynamic shapes. For example, tell us which ship is realistic and which one is abnormal. You know, this may be a very easy task for us, for human beings, but uh, it may be hard for us to write up uh, equations to, to describe this judgment. So we think it's a problem that uh, uh, machine learning can do something. So basically we use machine learning to construct a generic accurate chip and uh, continuous validity function to evaluate the aerodynamic shapes, okay? That's what we want to do first. However, in the real world, uh, the aerodynamic shapes are very different. So for example, from very small propeller blades to very large aircraft wings. So it's very hard for us to train a universal model to tell the abnormalities in all of these kind of shapes. So what we do is, uh, focusing on the elemental part, air foils at first. And we do have uh, some open source, uh, open accessible like uh, airflow data in hand. So these air foils are designed in the past uh, 100 years and uh, conveys very valuable information of previous engineers. So, the issue is that uh, they are limited in the amount. Basically, we'll only have uh, 1,600 airfoils in hand. Uh, you may say that's not too small, but for the training of a uh, machine learning model, or deep learning model, it's still not enough. So what we do is using GAN to produce a large number of realistic airfoils by learning the underlying distributions of these uh, previous designs. And it works. So, but when you using the game model, there is a famous issue that you should be careful. It causes a model clause. So, uh, it means like uh, when model clause occurs, you, your model can only learn a small part of the distribution in the original data. And uh, the airflow is generated by your game model will have very similar uh, shapes, okay? So in our study, we found that using prop data normalization and uh, also using the mass distance is helpful to avoid the model clubs in the airflow game model. And uh, surprisingly, we also found that uh, the game model can be trained using a very small number of airfoils. For example, we used uh, like 21 NASA supercritical airfoils to train the game model. And uh, we got a very robust uh, and uh, stable game model to provide us uh, a lot of uh, supercritical airflows, right? Uh, this is, uh, I think it's useful for the aircraft designers. Like for example, for, for some uh, uh, aircraft uh, factors, they can use their own uh, like family of airflow to train their own model to produce uh, uh, the geometries they would like to, to, to use. 
Then with the game model trained by the UHCFO database, uh, we can generate a lot of uh, realistic uh, airfoils. But to train the geometric abnormality model, we need to use abnormal airfoils as well. Uh, this is easy because we can uh, easily get them from by random perturbing the uh, realistic shapes using a conventional parameters method. And then with uh, this all these two kinds of data, we can change a um, validity model based on the CN discriminative model. Okay. And uh, we found this model works very well. Basically, can detect uh, whatever kinds of uh, geometric issues in the airfoils. And uh, the validity score given by this model um, just uh, changes smoothly from the real realistic airfoils to abnormal airfoils. Okay. So, this is uh, very important uh, if you want to use this model to perform geometry filtering. And uh, since this model is uh, just a narrow network, so once trained uh, using this model to do some analysis, it's really very, very cheap, okay? And uh, then a straightforward idea is, okay, we can just using this uh, validity model uh, as a constraint in the optimization, then we can filter all such abnormal shapes from, from our uh, design space, and we solved the, the geometric abnormality issue. But that's right, but before we doing that, we have to answer a question. That is, uh, does this filtering would prevent uh, the optimizer from finding some innovative shapes? Uh, as we just introduced, this model is uh, trained by historical data. So it may not know what kind of innovative shapes we need uh, recently, okay? So if uh, mistakenly, that treat some innovative shapes as abnormal shapes, or well, that would be terrible. Uh, we can't use it anymore. So we have to answer this question. So what we do is uh, perform uh, a lot of uh, different airflow design optimization, subject to different uh, constraints. And, and we use the mark arrow uh, framework to do this job. And uh, the optimized uh, airfoils in more than 200 problems uh, just released or varies on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the issue, okay? So based on, uh, as you can see in this figure that um, the distributions, the scores of the innovative airfoils uh, are all within the scope of the scores of uh, UAUC airfoils, okay? And uh, we also perform such a, test in the airflow, in the aircraft uh, ship design optimization and uh, the result tells a similar story. And uh, also find that it works in the you know, conventional aircraft ship design optimization. And which means using the geometry filtering does not prevent the optimizer from finding such innovative shapes, okay? So that we can, uh, use this model to perform geometric filtering uh, with no worries. Okay, so then we add the geometric validity constraints to the adjoint based optimistic framework. Uh, we use uh, the mark error uh, framework here and uh, we applied this modified framework to some challenging cases that cannot be effective solved previously. Here, uh, we use this modified uh, framework to solve the design problem starting from the circle, and uh, which is parameterized using 30 control points. And uh, this problem cannot be solved previously because uh, of the like uh, too many uh, abnormal issues. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. So, but after using the geometric uh, filtering, as you can see, and the adjoint based optimization just uh, converges robustly, which means using the validity uh, constraint uh, can solve the geometric uh, abnormality issue 
and uh, improve the robustness of agile based optimization. And we also find that uh, geometric filtering also have some performance to improve the efficiency of surrogate based optimization. As you can see in the figure, there is a significant uh, improvement in the efficiency after using the geometric filtering uh, in the design optimization of this CRM wing. But uh, we found that's still not enough because uh, the optimized shape still have a 10 drag uh, count difference from the optimized design of adjoint based optimization. So 10 drag counts is a like, very big difference uh, and the industry cannot accept this. So we need to further continue this research and uh, try to find out a way to perform uh, the reduction of their dimensionality. And um, we should be careful in doing this because we do not want to lose any effectiveness of the optimization. So at the beginning, we do not know uh, if we can make it uh, because uh, a lot of papers, a lot of researchers uh, are telling us that uh, using the conventional parameterization method, you have to use a high dimensional design space. So for example, for airfoil chip design, you basically need more than 20 design variables. And for wind ship design optimization, you would need uh, more than 200 design variables. Well, in our study, we found that uh, the only very small part of the high dimensional design space is corresponding to feasible uh, aerodynamic shapes. Um, I mean, realistic uh, and uh, also uh, subject to their like constraints uh, needed. So for example, in this uh, simple airfoil design case, uh, there is a clearly and uh, abrupt uh, decrease in the percentage of uh, feasibility of the design space with the increase of the dimensionality. Uh, basically, when you uh, perform uh, optimization with uh, like uh, more than 14 design variables, your design space will contain uh, a lot of uh, like uh, infeasible domains and the percentage of uh, feasible domain is less than 1%. And this issue is more significant uh, in three-dimensional shape design optimization. So this is a very bad news for design optimization, but it's a good news for us because uh, it conveys the message that uh, the dimensionality of the high dimensional design space can be reduced, right? So our idea is uh, just to parameterize the feasible domain. So the feasible, feasible domain uh, is uh, useful for design optimization. And uh, so if we want to just parameterize this feasible domain, we have to find out which part is feasible, okay? Uh, there's no equations to tell us this. And uh, we think that uh, we can first fill this domain with realistic airflow, uh, realistic samples, okay? So for example, we use the GAN model to give uh, the initial wind shapes. So with all of the sections given by the GAN model. Uh, also this, this wind shape, uh, the sectional shapes of this wind are uh, realistic, but uh, when we view this wing as a whole, uh, it's not feasible because it does not uh, satisfy the specified uh, like constraints, for example, on thickness or volume. So to solve this issue, we performed uh, like a, a proposed uh, optimal uh, sampling method, which uh, modify the initial samples uh, by performing optimizations subject to geometric constraints and also the geometric validity uh, constraints. And the, in the end, uh, we can get uh, a feasible wind shape, uh, which is very close to the random generated initial shape. And uh, if we're, we run this optimization from different kind of initial shape, we can get uh, different uh, 
realistic uh, wind shape in the visible domain of the head dimensional distance space, right? And uh, here, this video just show you how the optimization works. And uh, here we, uh, the problem is subject to more than 700 constraints. And uh, also we added uh, like uh, eight uh, discriminative constraints on the section shapes. And uh, since this uh, optimization does not involve uh, high fidelity safety models, it just use very cheap uh, models to perform the modification. So we can quickly get a lot of uh, uh, feasible wind ships, right? And uh, with such a large number of samples, we can use them to represent the feasible domain of the head image design space. And then we just need to find out a way to parameterize them. And uh, in a if lucky enough, you know, like a low dimensional design space. And uh, then we can perform um, optimization in this low design space without, which will not affect the optimization effectively, effectiveness, okay? So what we use is uh, to extract uh, orthogonal modes by using SVD or PUD or PCE. So they have different names, but these methods are all the same. And uh, we call the orthogonal modes as global wind modes in this case. And uh, we can just uh, use them uh, as a linear combination to describe the high dimensional uh, feasible domain. Okay. But uh, using them directly in the design optimization is not handy because we have to deal with different kind of geometric uh, constraints. So what we do is um, take advantage of Apagio and find out uh, the global design variables uh, corresponding to these global mode shifts, okay? Then we perform this optimization, still use Apagio, but in a model parameterization approach. And then we compared uh, the wind shift design optimization by using uh, the original FFD point uh, methods and uh, the model parameters methods. And we find that using 40 global wind modes uh, could give us uh, very similar results with uh, that using like uh, about 200 FFD control points, which means uh, using the, this model parameterization significantly reduce the dimensionality of the problem. And uh, this enables us to perform efficient uh, uh, global optimization of the, of the wind shape. Okay. And here we just found that using the model parameterization, ego can be as efficient and uh, effective as adjoint based optimization in the wind shape design optimization. And uh, also, this method uh, can be used uh, in more complex cases like the aircraft shape design optimization. And um, by just uh, parameterizing the feasible domains, it has uh, uh, effectively reduced uh, the dimensionality from hundreds to tens, uh, which addressed the cost of uh, dimensionality uh, issue in their aircraft ship design optimization. So what we have done so far is first, we eliminate the geometric abnormality uh, by proposing a deep learning based geometric filtering approach. And uh, we also find a way to reduce the dimensionality of the uh, geometric design space um, by just uh, uh, per parameterizing the feasible domains that is useful for the design problem. And uh, then we have a very low dimensional compact uh, geometric design space. And uh, with this space, we can do a lot of fancy things that cannot be done previously. So the first thing that um, we can perform efficient global optimization use any safety servers. The server does not to be very robust. And uh, also it does not have to be uh, with uh, adjoint suit, okay? 
So here is a case we use this method to perform low renoise number FO shape denormalization using the XFOIL. And we know XFOIL does not have a joint solver. And uh, due to the selection of the flow regime, we are facing like uh, non differentiation of functions. Uh, and this figure just showing the, the issue. Uh, this is mainly due to the abrupt change of the transition points. So we are the drag coefficient can directly uh, increased. So this is a, a terrible issue for grading based op optimization. And also XFOIL is uh, not very robust, especially when it, it is used to uh, analysis the uh, abnormal air, airflow shifts. So all of these issues make this problem kind of hard to perform. Um, but with our method by defining the low dimensional compact dense space, we can make uh, efficient global optimization uh, work very well. And uh, we solve, use this method to solve the problem with different kind of uh, lift constraints uh, in both like single point design problem and multi point design problem. And we found that all of them converged um, with a cost of uh, only hundreds of uh, exploit costs, right? So, and uh, actually we designed a UAV airfoil in this approach, uh, which we maximized as the endurance factor and uh, the design trauma also subject to a few uh, practical constraints. And we find that the result uh, works very well and uh, actually already made the model for uh, wind tunnel testing. And uh, currently we're planning to solve a more challenging problem like uh, the design optimization of the UAV uh, wind ship. So also in this transitional dominate low renoise number region. So <clears throat> this is the this case is more challenging because we have to use uh, runs with the uh, transitional model to evaluate uh, the, the object function. And uh, we may also need to use the unsteady runs to simulate uh, the maximum leaf coefficient uh, by performing CRD at a large angle of type. So these two functions uh, make it very hard to develop the adjoint uh, method. So basically we only have, uh, uh, the only method we can use is uh, efficient global optimization. And uh, ego is uh, also hard to perform because uh, uh, I mean, without the compact geometric design space, ego was hard to perform, but currently with this model, uh, we think we have quite confident to make it work. And uh, also with the compact low dimensional design space, we can um, enable like real time aerodynamic shape design optimization by training a generic uh, and accurate aerodynamic an analysis model. So actually we did such a job like three years ago, uh, where we model the aerodynamic shape using the airflow modes and uh, generate a large number of training points in this uh, compact uh, design space. And eventually we get a uh, purely data-based uh, model uh, which to analysis the performance of airfoils, uh, which has um, accuracy similar to runs and uh, can be used from subsonic regime to transonic regime. And basically, Based on this model, we can perform very fast airflow ship design and for any given um, design uh, requirement um, from like different number of design points and uh, different kinds of uh, constraints. Okay. And uh, to make this tool um, public accessible, we developed a web foil. And uh, not everybody can perform airflow ship design optimization in just uh, several seconds. Okay, I know this project is actively 
developed developed by colleagues at MDU Lab, and uh, you can check uh, their new papers to follow their new progress. Okay. Um, compared to the two-dimensional airship design, the industry is more interested in performing like a three-dimensional one-shape design optimization. Well, this task uh, was treated as impossible because we have to model a lot of uh, uh, design variables, and uh, it's really hard to train an uh, accurate model to do this kind of job. But with our compact uh, design space definition method using the global remotes, we, find, we think uh, it's time to show them that we can do this job. Okay. And then we perform this research uh, where we want to automate the CRM win at different uh, flight conditions. So in the end, we used uh, a design space with uh, 60 uh, design variables, and we model the, the three coefficients and also the pressure distributions to give us a, a quick view of the automated results. And uh, beneficial from the the compact definition of the design space and also a large number of uh, training points. Uh, we made a very accurate model to evaluate uh, these functions. So basically the relative error of the CR and CD and CM model, it are always in within 1% compared with the run CFD. And uh, also you can see in, the, in this figure that uh, the database model can give almost the same CP distribution uh, with the result of run. Then we performed the uh, wind shape design using this model and uh, it can be done in just 30 seconds. And the, the result is uh, almost the same with that obtained by safety based on augmentation. With this uh, quick design tool, we can fastly uh, get to the optimal wind shapes that is suitable for different flight missions. And uh, we can also perform a massively multi-point design optimization uh, in just several minutes. Okay. So basically the two cases just um, uh, demonstrate that uh, with the compact definition of the design space, we can enable real-time aerodynamic shape design, okay? Well, actually we think uh, many other researchers can benefit from the compact geometric design space. Uh, we think basically if you, you are dealing with the um, change of the aerodynamic shape, uh, you can find uh, it useful to define a low dimensional compact design space. And uh, in our one of our recent research, uh, we find it's uh, very useful to have such a design space uh, so that we can train an accurate uh, data driven uh, constraint uh, model for the transonic buffet down set. And uh, we, don't, we cannot imagine if we just uh, train the model from these rubbish samples and uh, what kind of result we can get. Uh, I think it, it will be terrible. We cannot get uh, such accurate model in the end. So basically, uh, we think uh, if you want to model the, the change of aerodynamic shape, uh, for example, in your know, research uh, in constructing radio sort model or perform uh, construct a theta driven models for other important issues like transition or stalls. Uh, our suggestion is that uh, you do not have to make your model work for whatever kinds of aerodynamic shapes. Okay, uh, you do not need to have to like waste uh, your time, your training data in the infi super domain. You just uh, choose the right design space, and uh, you can find the right model. Okay, so. Before the end of the talk, I would like to summarize the key steps to define the compact geometric design space. 
So the first step, we need to focus on the elemental part of the aerodynamic chip. And uh, uh, we just focus the AFOs. And then we need to construct a, a validity function to evaluate uh, the abnormality of this chip. Okay. And this step, you may need the machine learning techniques. And uh, third, uh, you should find out a way to fill the high dimensional physical domain use realistic airfoils, uh, realistic samples. And uh, what we do is proposing an optimal sampling method uh, using based on the machine learning model constructed in step two. And then in the end, uh, we can just reformulate the feasible domain into a very low dimensional design space by using, by extracting the orthogonal modes. Okay. So I think that's it. And I uh, uh, hope like uh, you can learn something uh, from this talk. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for Jin Chao for this uh, impressive talk. So uh, the, it's time for questions. Uh, you can just uh, raise your hand or like you can uh, open your mic to ask questions. Oh, I saw Disha uh, raise your hand. So you have a question? Uh, well, uh, I just clapped like, but uh, I can ask one question. I always <laughs> like, uh, I always like a joint method, like a reader, like a joint method because it's able to handle the hundreds thousands of like you know, optimization. Uh, sorry, uh, pyramids. Um, but of right. course, this is like a very very CFD or numerical like a method. It's like really difficult to like you know to together with uh, couple with like experiments. But on, on top of like, you know, experimental like a perspective, like, you know, uh, this optimization, I have a particular question is like for, for, for a joint method, I saw a very small amount of work in unsteady flow, which means like transient right. flow or the things. Um, this is a big question. And uh, right. if I may just like get you uh, like some like the insight, where do you think like, you know, uh, this direction of a transient uh, for example, for maneuver, for like, you know, for acceleration flow. Um, and uh, like, uh, what's your comment on that? So it's a big question, but like, just want to get some insight into uh, of yours. Right, 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 right. So basically performing uh, optimization and steady uh, flow uh, regimes is very hard because uh, the agent itself, uh, uh, there are some issues there, uh, especially in the high redox number regime, uh, steady the adjoint is may be unstable. So basically you cannot get to the derivatives by solving a very uh, like expensive adjoint uh, solution. And so that's basically, that's also the one of the motivation for us to perform this research uh, because um, in this situation, um, uh, if we do not need, we need not find, find out a way to perform optimization without using a joint. So that's what we did. Uh, that's the motivation of this, part of the motivation of this, this work. So, right. So that's why we, we, we try to reduce the dimensionality of the data space and to make a efficient global optimization, so-called efficient global optimization, really efficient and uh, perform the in either like uh, challenging cases, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think like uh, there's a lot of like more to like discuss like offline. So I'll leave this uh, floor to other people. So. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, Yo, I just, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. I just remember like <laughs> I need to something. <laughs> so I just uh, got a message from Professor Kim Martins like ask me to give uh, a advertisement for his new book. I read this book, um, Engineering Design Optimization. So it's a great book. It contains a lot of uh, details in the development of uh, agile method and they perform grid based optimization and uh, multi uh, MPO. And uh, also it uh, has a lot of very impressive figures in this book. So I think it's a very nice book for all of you who would like learning something about engineering design optimization. And the good news about this book is that there is a free PDF version available. 
And uh, if you're interested in this book, you can check out. It. Okay. So yeah, so back to the audience for questions, right? Yeah, thanks, Jin Chao, for introducing this uh, book. So uh, essentially, I saw uh, we can't do rise uh, his hand. So uh, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, this is we can do. I have a question. I have a question more toward the practical application of this method because uh, in reality, when we design a geometry either for aircraft or for propellers, actually I'm a propeller guy, so I'm thinking more of a propeller thing. So in reality, we design propeller. Uh, what we design, is at a certain design point, for example, a certain speed, and we design a geometry. However, what we get when we do the manufacture of that propeller is usually quite different. There are some difference from their design. Either in your condition, the condition you run the propeller or the actual geometry will have some difference with your design geometry. It's very common. It's, uh, we have an abstract to control that, but it's very common that there are some difference. I'm thinking, in your method, whether it's possible to include this uncertainty. I know some people are doing something. I'm not sure that, but I think it's called uncertainty qualification. I'm wondering if you're able to include that in your in your model. In other words, you may have a you may have a model that you may have a geometry that works best. However, it's not that forgiving for changes. For example, if you are running it at the off design condition, another model may not be as good as the, this model. Another geometry may not be as good as this geometry, but it's more forgiving for off design conditions right. or for if the geometry slightly changes, it's still good. So the second geometry might be a better uh, geometry in the end instead of the first one. So I'm thinking whether it's possible to include that uh, uncertainty in your model. Thank you. That's right, right. So basically it's kind of a question about uh, robust design. And uh, also a robust design can also be somehow transferred to a more safely multi-point design position where we can evolve a large, large number of design points, for example, hundreds or even, uh, even thousands of design points to, to solve that kind of issue. But for the state-of-art method, like using agile-based optimization, that will reduce like um, a significant increase of the cost. So we think uh, by reducing their dimensionality, uh, this kind of uh, things can also be benefit. So for example, we can using like e efficient global optimization is, uh, is kind of easier to handle the uncertainty, right? It can easily for you to add more design points because the circuit model is cheap to evaluate the the performance there. So uh, that's the that's basically that's, that's the one thing we care about uh, as well. And actually, we are planning to perform such a uh, research uh, in the. Uh, but there's a, a the application is kind of different, but it uh, is answering uh, similar questions about a massively multi-point design optimization to improve the robustness of the. Uh, of the design, right? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Thank you for asking this uh, very interesting question. So uh, essentially, I saw two questions from the uh, chat board. So actually, uh, Chen Zhou, or Xu Chen Zhou asked two questions. The first one, he mentioned that in the optimization program described of the CRM win, the two geoconstraints are thickness uh, larger than 0.98 initial thickness and the volume is uh, smaller than 1.02 volume. So why you use the relaxed constraints, not uh, uh, very strict constraints? Right, right. So, okay, uh, I first answer this question first. So we need to use uh, kind of relax the, the, the geometry constraints to direct the remotes there. Uh, because uh, we want to the design space uh, kind of larger, a bit larger than what it really need, uh, so that we can leave some freedom or kind of uh, rooms margins uh, to improve the performance. So that's the motivation to 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 perform this uh, relax election. Okay, and 
So uh, I can solve the question, maybe I guessed it. So yeah, the second one is about- Continue ask the second question. Okay, so uh, it's about, I think it's about the when should be done. Um, uh, between condition, uh, I, I'm not sure. So what, what's the difference of the input parameters? So we, we did a model difference of parameters. That's, that's why we can perform optimization. And uh, the parameters that we model, they uh, include uh, like the shapes. We actually use 50 Wimov there. And uh, we also consider like the twist design variable, change of the twist, and also the change of the uh, flight Mach number and uh, flight uh, altitude, and also angle of attack. Yes, well, the model can account for these kind of differences. Right. Yeah, sucks. I, I don't know either. So, okay. So I don't know if that answers the, the question from uh, Chen Zhou Xu, but let's uh, continue maybe. So, uh, so, uh, like Hume Xue Lu has a question regarding like, uh, say for the optimization, uh, did you consider the uh, 3D effects, which sections of the airport you considered in the, in your optimi uh, optimization? Right. right, right. I think this is a very good question. So maybe we just talk about too much about the airfoils. It seems like we just uh, like do 2D uh, optimization. Actually we use, uh, like had mentioned, you know, a high fidelity 3D uh, safety model to evaluate the performance. And uh, we just using section shapes to have to give us uh, information how to reduce the dimensionality of the geometry, right? But the, the simulation uh, are all performed in 3D. So yeah, 3D effect is considered. Yeah, thanks. So uh, is there any other question? You can raise your hand or like open your mic. If no, I have a question. So, uh, Dr. Sure. Lee, uh, it seems like all your optimization is uh, first uh, takes a, a prototype from the, uh, like you mentioned, this, this is a, a fundamental elements from UIUC Apple database. So, uh, I have a question like, uh, is this well like constrain the uh, creative of the uh, machine learning? So for instance, like everything will be like uh, like compared with uh, uh, classic ones, but there's no theory there. Like for instance, like there's no theory of transition, there's no theory of shock waves. So if we just compare the, uh, air, the, the new learned airfoil with, uh, with old airfoil, so you cannot break the break the constraint from the old effort. Do you know what I mean? Uh, kind of, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, uh, let me first answer the question based on my understanding, okay? So, <clears throat> right, so the lessons of the knowledge we learned from previous design is just used to, to define the design space, okay? So it's just give, uh, give us an efficient way to have uh, like, uh, uh, low dimensional design, compact design space for the optimization. But the optimization itself is based on, still based on the high fidelity safety model. Okay. So, so basically how to improve the, how to modify the geometry, it's still based on the, like the performance calculated in like the job, like the uh, transition, like the shock waves on the uh, surface of the, shapes so right so the previous knowledge is just used to find out a suitable low dimensional design space and it improves the performance and efficiency of the of the high dimension uh, high fidelity design so i'm not sure uh if i have answered your question yeah 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 that's fantastic okay so great if anyone else has questions if you know, uh, I'm very uh, glad again to uh, thanks Dr. Lee to give an uh, impressive talk here. And uh, I will end the, today's talk. Uh, see you next week. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me and thank you everyone for joining us. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.